Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Miss Rosalind Russell in Louis Brumfield's Mrs. Parkington on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark will bring you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we are delighted to present a dramatization of a well-known story by one of America's best and most popular writers, Louis Brumfield. Mr. Brumfield, who won the Pulitzer Prize for one of his novels, is many things besides a writer. He's widely traveled. I remember I first met him at a party in London. And he's also a farmer whose land in Ohio has become famous not only because of the books he has written about it, but because of the excellence of its methods and produce. A good writer and a good farmer. Quite a combination, that. The story of Mr. Brumfield's that we have chosen for tonight is Mrs. Parkington, and we're especially privileged to have starring in it one of Hollywood's most famous actresses, Rosalind Russell. But before we raise the curtain, here is Frank Goss, who has a brief message from Hallmark. For a Christmas greeting your friends will long remember, make your selections now from the complete Hallmark collection on display at the friendly store where you buy Hallmark cards. Whatever your taste, whatever your budget, you'll take special pride in sending Hallmark cards. And on the back of every one is the identifying Hallmark that says, you cared enough to send the very best. Hallmark Playhouse, starring Rosalind Russell in Louis Brumfield's Mrs. Parkington. No matter how many years your face records, the past, where you are always young, is only a memory away. Leaping Rock, Nevada, is 67 years back into time for me. But I have only to close my eyes to be that age again, to live those hours over. I have only to close my eyes to see my mother shutting the kitchen door and leaning wearily against it. I have only to close my eyes to see Major Parkington, our star boarder from New York, coming in the kitchen door. He had on a silk shirt and a purple cravat and a checkered waistcoat, and a diamond pin and a diamond ring, and a gold watch and chain. He'd sit there straddling a chair while we cooked dinner. I tell you, you'll love New York, Susie. It's color, noise, excitement, adventure. It's the Arabian Nights, it's poetry, it's music, it's Delmonico's. It's dancing, it's laughter, it's enchantment. It's a city for the young, Susie. A challenging, fabulous city that belongs to anyone who can conquer it. Was it the moment when I sat in the kitchen telling him about New York and he told me about it that I fell in love with him? That moment, he was a child. Was it in that dark hour after my mother and father died in the mine explosion when he tried to shut out all pain of loss and death, but I first loved him. That hour he was a father. Or did I wait to fall completely in love that snowy wedding night when he carried me across the threshold of the Brevoort Hotel? That evening, he was a husband. Are you happy, Susie? Oh, Gus, it is like the Arabian Nights. Red velvet curtains and white roses and candlelight. Oh, Susie, you're so young and so lovely. I wake to a memory of music and soft falling snow. Across the room, I saw my husband eyeing me over a coffee cup. 
Get up and have some breakfast, sleepyhead. I certainly will. How did that breakfast get in here without waking me up? Came by magic. I waved my hand. There it was. <laughs> oh, I'm so hungry. Here, have some coffee. I sent a note to a friend of mine asking her to come and take you on a shopping expedition today. Huh? Uh-huh. Aspasia Conti. She's a French woman who knows more about everything than any woman has a right to know about anything. <laughs> She'll help you in a lot of ways. Help me? Susie, darling, I'm a very rich man, but while money can buy a lot, it can't buy everything. New York is a tough place. We'll have to fight for what we want. I've always had to fight. I don't mind for myself. But I want to make it easy for you. Well, that must be Aspasia. Hello, Gus, darling. Susie, this is Mademoiselle Conti. Mademoiselle, this is my wife. I'm very happy to know you, Mademoiselle Conti. It is a pleasure to meet the wife of my very good friend, Major Parkington. She is much more beautiful than you deserve, Gus. I want you to take her out and buy her the most fashionable things in the city. Because tonight I'm going to show Susie New York. And I'm going to show New York Mrs. Parkington. And it was all he said it would be. Music and laughter, poetry and waltzes. Winter melted into spring, and my life was at its springtime too. And when I learned that I was going to have a child, it seemed to me I had reached the fullest happiness that can come to any woman. I began to wish then that we could leave the hotel and find a small cottage somewhere outside the city. I told Gus. And that afternoon, he drove Aspasia and me down to 34th Street. Here we are, Susie. Oh, careful now. <laughs> I'm all right, Gus. Well, I don't believe I know anyone at this address. Uh, what is it? A hotel? How does it strike you as a cottage? A cottage? Oh. It strikes me as being just about what would strike you as being a cottage. <laughs> I'm not so sure about Susie. I bought this today as a surprise for you, Susie. What? You may not believe it, but this house has 30 rooms. 30 rooms for two people? Well, don't forget there's going to be three of us pretty soon. Well, even so, we don't need ten rooms apiece. Here, look at this door. Solid mahogany. Oh. Merciful heavens, what a hall! Oh, I've never seen such chandeliers. Oh, gosh, the gas bills are going to be ferocious. <laughs> See that staircase? Marble, every inch of it. You like it, Susie? Like it? Oh, Gus, it's a palace. I knew you'd love it. Come on. Let me show you the rest of it. Here's the ballroom. Oh, oh, what a room for a party. And I'm giving a party in three weeks. I'm going to have the cream of New York society. Oh, it's time we launched ourselves. We've got the house, we've got the money. Espazia, you can help me with the guest list. And Susie, you'll stand right there by that window in a white satin gown. There'll be flowers everywhere and music playing and the best people in New York bowing before you. later, I stood in that ballroom in my white satin, with Gus and Aspasia facing an empty room. There was a Dresden shepherd and shepherdess on the mantel behind us, and suddenly Gus picked up the shepherd and hurled it across the empty ballroom. <laughs> Gus! Oh, Gus, how could you? How could you? So, they didn't come. They'll pay for this, every last one of them. Gus, I, I feel a little dizzy. Take I... her up to bed, Gus. The evening is bad enough for her without you shouting and carrying on like that. It doesn't matter, Gus. It doesn't matter that no one came. I'm just so tired. You had better carry her upstairs. No, no, I'll be all right. I'll, I'll be all... Oh. Susie, Susie. Carry her upstairs to bed. I will send one of the men for the doctor. <laughs> I'm here, darling. I'm so tired, Gus. I know. Why don't you go outdoors and walk? I'm all right, the doctor said. I'll pay them back. If it takes every cent I've got. If it hadn't been for those snobs, I might have had a son today. And you wouldn't be lying there with all that pain behind you and nothing to show for it. Gus, the doctor said it was because I fell. 
probably have happened regardless of the body. Dirty, rotten snobs. Susie, I swear to you, I'll pay every one of them back. There was nothing I could say or anyone else could say that would ever change him. I forgot about the episode as the months and then the years went by. And Herbert and Elliot and Alice were born. And it wasn't until long ago, much later than that, that I found out that he'd been getting his revenge. That was an hour when I feared him and almost hated him. An hour when I met a completely new Major Parkington. Gus? Have you seen the newspaper? Prominent financier commits suicide. Radnor Beaumont dies. Yes, I saw it. He was one of the people you invited to the party, wasn't he? Yes. According to the papers, he was facing bankruptcy. It can be very dangerous to refuse an invitation to a party you give, can't it? Very. Goodhue Blair's cousin was here. She begged me as a favor to, to ask you not to ruin her cousin... She said he would kill himself. Good, you Blair won't kill himself. He hasn't the guts. I'll try to explain it to you. Those same men would have ruined me just as ruthlessly. They were trying to do it, but they weren't strong enough. And I can tell you one thing. If they had, I wouldn't have hanged myself in a cupboard. I'd have gone back to work and made another fortune. <laughs> was an ambitious man. Ambitious for himself, ambitious for his wife, ambitious for his children. They went to the best schools, dressed like royalty and had everything money could buy. I tried to keep him from giving them too much, but he was determined they should have all the things that neither of us had in our childhood. And they certainly did. And so it happened when our daughter, Alice, was still too young to know what she wanted. She decided to marry a French duke. Aspasia, I know this marriage is wrong. Do you realize that Gus is settling $100,000 a year on the duke? I cannot sanction a marriage like that. Oh, you may be right, but it is too late for that. Oh, let her marry him, Susie. If she does not marry the duke, it, it will be another like him. She is doomed. Why do you say that? It is the same with her brothers. Their father has implanted in them a sense of being possessed of some special privilege, of being outside the rules which govern the conduct of ordinary people. So Alice will marry, not for love, but for a title. And there is nothing you can do about it. Aspasier. Oh, Aspasier. I'm so afraid you're right. Would you like to send a personally imprinted Christmas card this Christmas? So unusual, your friends will show it to all who visit them during the holiday season? Then, then see the new Hallmark creations at the friendly store where you buy Hallmark cards. There are five distinctive types of Hallmark cards for imprinting with your name. Each designed as only Hallmark craftsmen can design them. There are Hallmark cards with beautiful designs and silken tapestries, richly engraved formal cards, and cards that speak a man's language with sporting scenes by Edwin McGargy, Lynn Bogue Hunt, Lasselle Ripley. There's the Hallmark Blue Book with sophisticated designs and surprise features. And there's the Hallmark Gallery Artist Series. Open the Hallmark album at any page, and what a treasure lies before you. Quaint winter scenes by Grandma Moses. Delightful Christmas scenes by Norman Rockwell. Here, too, you'll find Salvador Dali, Marcel Vertez, Cezanne, Renoir, Gauguin, Monet, Van Gogh. Yes, more than 50 foremost artists contribute their genius to the Hallmark Gallery Artist Collection. Personal Christmas cards on which you will be proud to have your name imprinted. Remember, these are Hallmark cards. When friends receive them and look on the back, as you did, they'll see the hallmark and know you cared enough to send the very best. A 
And now we continue with part two of Louis Brumfield's Mrs. Parkington, starring Rosalind Russell. I have only to close my eyes to enter the past at random. Three years after Alice's marriage was a summer I shall always look back on as the most terrible summer of my life. My son Herbert was killed in June in an automobile accident, leaving a widow and two small children. And in August came a letter from Alice saying her marriage was unbearable and impossible, that she wanted a divorce. Aspasia and I left for Paris immediately. And when we arrived there, we learned that the Duke was contesting the divorce. This was obviously a move to extract blackmail money. So I decided to match the Duke at his own game. I hired detectives, got a complete file on the Duke's past and present activities, and then arranged a meeting. He was as charming as ever. Mrs. Parkington, you're lovelier than even my memories of you. Thank you, Jacques. You needn't be flattering. This is hardly a friendly meeting. I understand that you have treated Alice abominably and that you have absented yourself from home for weeks at a time. It is all well quite true. But from the beginning, it was complete misery to live with her. Nothing is worth that. Jacques, understand this. There isn't going to be any more money. My husband was too generous to you in the first place. Last time you dealt with him. This time you deal with me. I have a dossier here on you that was compiled by six of the finest and possibly the most unscrupulous detectives in France. It is in complete order, ready to be released to the newspapers. You are very good at your game, Mrs. Parkington. For instance, do you know a Madame Nazaire? It would be most foolish to say no. An expose of that little episode in your life would drag in the names of other important people. You need not continue. I'm forced to say that your investigators are remarkably good. My lawyer and yours will get together. I will not contest the divorce. Susie! Oh, God! Oh, how I've missed you. Aspasia! Oh, God! How you look grand. Alice, darling. Pop, it's good to see you. I've arranged a wonderful summer for you. You'll soon forget all this business. Oh, it's so good to have my family home again. Gus, where's Eddie? Susie, let me tell you about that when we get home. Come on, the car's right over here. Eddie, dead. My son. My son dead. Don't, darling. There's nothing that can be done now. But to kill himself, why? Why? We don't know that he killed himself. It happened in Denver. The gun may have been discharged accidentally. Gus, I... I have to get out of this house. Susie. I have to go for a while. I can't bear this house. I can't bear to look at it, to be shut up in it. If I stay here, I'll die too. Susie, I... I... hate this house. I tell you, I hate this house. I hate the money. We're choking, smothering, strangling in money. Can't you see that? If it hadn't been for the money, Herbert wouldn't have had money to buy a car. Alice wouldn't have married that fortune hunter. Eddie wouldn't have had everything and been tired of it before he was 25. I hate the money, and I hate this house. I wanted you and my children to have everything. I wanted to found a dynasty. Well, you founded your dynasty. I hope you're proud of it. <laughs> I remember thinking I must surely die of grief and bitterness. But the heart has a way of reconciling itself and going on. Just as Gus had said New York was there to conquer or to be conquered, so it is with life. If you've red blood in your veins, you conquer life and go on. And only when you're long past the hours of trial do you discover that what you conquered each time was lost. Knowing this, I was able to go on when the Major died. Susie, you have been wonderful. I know the funeral and all was a great trial to you. It was a great sorrow for you too, Aspasia. I know that. Gus might have married you if it hadn't been for that explosion in the Leaping Rock. Oh, no, Susie. Gus Parkington was in love with youth. 
And I have been old from the hour of my birth, just as you have been young. Oh, he, he was a splendid man. He was a happy man. I think people are really happy in proportion to how much they give. He wasn't always a good man, but he gave a great deal. He gave a great deal more than he took from others. Yes, Leaping Rock is 67 years back into time. 67 years from the moment when the Major first told me about New York to the moment when my granddaughter's husband, Amory, walked into my sitting room on Christmas Eve. The whole family was gathered downstairs for a Christmas dinner, and I was just about to go down when he came in. Hello there, Granny. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Amory. I hate to bother you before the Christmas dinner, but it is rather important. How much do you need this time, Amory? $750,000. $750,000? Amory! That's the amount I've stolen. Stolen? I took funds I had access to that weren't mine to invest. I thought I had a sure thing and that I could put the money back. Oh, Amory, why? Why, Amory? You had plenty of money. You knew there was more, much more in the background. You only had to wait until I died. I wanted to make more money. I wanted to be successful. If I give you this money, will that stop the whole thing? I hope so. It's just a matter of putting it back now. And if I don't give it to you? I shall have to stand trial. I see. Cook says dinner's ready, Mrs. Parkington. She's getting cross about it. Come, Amory. Let's go down. I'll think this over and let you know my decision before you leave tonight. I sat at the dinner table looking around at the faces of Gus's and my descendants. And suddenly I knew, with a cold sense of defeat, that not one of those faces was a happy one. And I remembered Alice's face when she was young, and Herbert's, and Eddie's. And I knew that they had not been happy either. But Gus and I had been happy, and suddenly realizing that, I knew what I had to do. <laughs> I think Grandmother's been looking wonderful. Right? Quiet, everybody, quiet, please. Grandmother has the floor. A Merry Christmas to you all. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas to you. I think perhaps I had better say that first, because I don't know how merry you're going to think it is when I finish. First of all, Amory is in trouble that calls for some financial assistance, which I am going to give him. Thank you, Granny. Thank you. I'm going to give it to him, because I don't blame him for the trouble he is in any more than I blame the rest of you for being selfish and spoiled. Amory, like you, is a product of the things he had no control over, the era that preceded him. I think now he has learned a lesson, but something must be done about him and about you. So for all of you, when I die, a small trust fund will be set up, the income from which will pay your rent and food and very little else. If you want anything else, I very much hope you will go out and earn it. Well, of all the nerves. Well, I hardly thought it would be pleasing but to you. But, Grandmother, the rest of the money... It's going back where it came from. You mean a memorial for the Major? No, indeed. I'm not interested in creating a legend at this late date that Gus was a great man. Gus did a lot of good, but most of it was done accidentally. I stayed married to him all these years because he was a scamp on a gigantic scale. And because he was fascinating. And because I was in love with him right up to the end. I was kind of Gus's gun mouth when you come right down to it. No, the money is going to things like hospitals and settlements and libraries. And now let's get on with this party because tomorrow I am going on a trip and I want to be good and rested to go on it. Where are you going, Granny? I am going back to Leaping Rock, Nevada. <laughs> And 
so I went back to finish the days in the land where I had begun them. And now I was content with the hot, sleepy slowness of the days. For I knew what lay beyond the mountains. What New York and most of the rest of the world was like. And I knew that here was what all the rest of the world was seeking. Simplicity and a sense of freedom and well-being and happiness of spirit. It had been there all the time, but it had taken me 67 years to find my way back to it. In a moment, James Hilton and Rosalind Russell will return. But first, may I invite you again to see the new Hallmark Christmas cards now on display at your friendly Hallmark dealers. If you prefer to select cards to individually fit each one on your list, you'll find the Hallmark card that says just what you want to say, the way you want to say it. There are Hallmark albums from which to select cards for imprinting with your name. And there are the many boxes of assorted Hallmark cards. Yes, whatever your taste, whatever your budget, there are Hallmark cards you'll take special pride in sending. And when your friends receive them and look on the back, as you did, they'll see the Hallmark and know you cared enough to send the very best. Now here again is James Hilton. Miss Rosalind Russell, I want you to know how much we've enjoyed having you here with us tonight. For all of us here and for every member of the Hallmark family, our grateful thanks for a great performance. I never know quite how to respond to introductions or words of appreciation. I guess like your hallmark greeting cards, the best practice is simply to say the appropriate and the sincere thing. So thank you. It was a great pleasure to be here. We shall inscribe your name on our roll of honored guests, and we invite you to listen next week when we shall present O'Halloran's Luck by Stephen Vincent Benet and starring Edmund O'Brien. Ladies and gentlemen, in the workshop behind our Hallmark Playhouse, it's Christmas. Oh no, we are not exchanging gifts, yet. But we've been doing a lot of thinking about Christmas, about the Hallmark Christmas radio program. We've already made our selection, and I won't tell you what it is. I'm merely using it as an illustration of how far ahead we work. Long before you hear a story on the air, we've been through libraries and bookshelves, reading, making notes, and discussing dramatic possibilities. We try to select the kind of person the author had in mind when he created the character, and therefore we try to visualize the particular star who will fit the leading role. It's a long, careful process, but I'd rather think we've been successful if your comments are any gauge. We like to hear from you. As a matter of fact, I'd like to hear from you about stories you're especially fond of. It might help me and all of us in making the Hallmark shows your best entertainment. So if you'd care to write to me, and I'd welcome that, just address James Hilton, care of Hallmark Playhouse, Columbia Broadcasting System, Hollywood, California. And now, until next Thursday, this is James Hilton saying good night. Tonight's story was adapted for radio by Gene Holloway with music composed and conducted by Lynn Murray. Our director-producer is Dee Engelbach. Rosalind Russell is currently starred in the independent artist production The Velvet Touch. Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Hallmark cards when you care enough to send the very best. This is Frank Goss saying goodnight to you all until next week at the same time when James Hilton returns to present Stephen Vincent Benet's O'Halloran's Luck, starring Edmund O'Brien. In the following week, Claude Jarman, Jr. in Mary O'Hara's My Friend Flicker. This program came to you from the Hallmark Playhouse. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.